Hi, John here with Wayne Shung from Direct Action Everywhere. Hello, Wayne. How you doing? Good, thank you. If you were out in public wearing your DXC shirt and someone said, DXC, what's that about? What, how would you respond? Man, I think the most important thing probably is just empowering activists. You know, so many groups are about persuading vegetarians and vegans or omnivores to make some sort of dietary shift. But DXC is very different in that we're trying to build a movement. We want to empower the folks who already care about animals to take action to make the world a better place. Excellent. I have taken part in actions in many cities around North America with DXC. And uh, one thing we would do is sometimes go into establishments where they're serving animal products, like in a restaurant or a grocery store. And I was a little nervous at first, but uh, one of my favorite quotes is, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And there's strength in numbers. So if, if say someone was a little nervous about doing an action, what would you say? Well, I'd say they're very brave because when I did my first action, I wasn't a little nervous. I was terrified. I mean, I was shivering and barely could hold my sign up. So, you know, the entire point of these actions is to go into places that are disruptive, that, that make you and others uncomfortable because they're places where violence has been normalized. And when you kind of bring attention to the issue and dissent from conventional norms, there's going to be some anxiety, and that's precisely the point. But, you know, that's the logic of social justice. If there isn't some uncomfort, if there isn't some anxiety, if there isn't some tension, you're not doing your job. Excellent. And for someone who wants to participate, there are many different jobs they can do. Uh, what are the, some of the different jobs, like, you know, leaflet, hold a sign? Sure. Yeah, we have leafleters at our, all our actions. We have videographers. We have folks who are, who are kind of just there to observe, to be place liaisons. And frankly, you know, a huge part of what we do is just building community. So even if you never want to come to a protest at all, uh, you want to help us with potlucks. You want to help us with educational events. You want to help us make videos. I mean, there's so many different roles in any sort of movement, and DXC is trying to empower all of them. I know of some people who tried to go vegan and they gave up after a while because they didn't lose the weight they expected to lose or something. But what, one thing I love about DXC is you help people change their associations with animal products. Yeah. You teach them, one, you're famous for the one slogan I really love, it's not food, it's violence. So you're helping people to see meat, eggs, and dairy not as food, as violence. Yeah, and there's a lot of evidence showing that when people see animal rights and veganism not as a dietary issue, but as a moral issue, they stick to it a lot more. And when you start conceiving of the body of an animal as not just a thing, not just a product for you to consume, but as, as the, the body of a victim of violence, it really reconceives your relationship with certain food products in a good way. Something else DXC does is open rescue. And I've tried that as well. And I did that in Australia. And again, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. I was nervous about, about getting onto these properties. But uh, you've done direct action and, and saved lives. Yeah, I think it's really the, the fuel that fuels the entire engine of DXC. And when we started DXC a little less than four years ago, our goal was to build a movement for open rescue, to build a movement that, that empowered activists and trained activists to go right into the heart of darkness where animals are being tortured and killed and take the victims out because there's an incredible power in rescuing individual lives. When we showcase the stories of these suffering animals who all they want to do is be left alone and their entire lives have been misery, darkness, and pain, you take them to sanctuary, give them the lives they deserve. Frankly, even omnivores are often crying at the end of our videos. Yeah. And I love that DXC is incorporating music into different actions because I'm a big music fan. And we have Ernesto in the house. I, <laughs> I love your song, Liberation. A beautiful song. And so, yeah, that's something fun too. I remember years ago going into a grocery store with a sign with a little, uh, it said, meat is murder, and someone took a picture and someone kicked us out. And now, like, to be in a, a grocery store with a whole choir singing is very powerful. It's incredibly powerful. And, you know, again, one of the underappreciated things about DXC is the importance with which we take art and music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a famous quote that art is the window into the human soul, but, and that's very true, but it's also the vessel through which human culture is transmitted. For 2.5 million years since we began as a species, we've used music and paintings on cave walls to demonstrate powerful purpose and meaning in our lives. And if the animal rights movement isn't capable of creating that sort of powerful art, we're not gonna change the world. But the good thing is we are, because we have artists like you, Eva, who's sitting across from me, Ernesto and Lindsay, great musicians and artists, really stepping up to tell the story of an animals, not just in a rational and abstract and philosophical way, but in a way that's just viscerally and emotionally powerful. And we need more of that. And that helps to get uh, attention. I know when you go to actions, you're reaching people, but then when you take pictures and videos and you share them online, you can often reach a lot more people than you did at the actual action. Absolutely, and it's so important to do activism in the public, right? Mm -hmm. It's not enough for us to sit at home and cry over these horrible videos that we've all seen, because the more we withdraw into our own vegan bubble, the less the world's gonna change. We have to be out there publicly standing proudly for the animals 
And so whether your talent is being a musician, um, being an artist, being a speaker, someone who plays the drums, someone who just makes incredible signs and graphic design, we want you to do that publicly so more people can be influenced. And the wonderful thing is, with modern communication tools, even if you're not a large corporation with a huge marketing budget, you can get your content out to the world and millions of people will see it. And we've seen that many times with your videos, John. Oh, thank you. Everyone I've ever met from DXC has been incredibly friendly and it, it feels like family. Yeah, you know, we, at DXC we practice what's called radical inclusivity. We believe that everybody who walks into our space, regardless of what their background is, ethnically, racially, you know, demographically, class, we want to include everyone. We want to make everyone in this movement feel like they're empowered to make change for animals because everybody matters immensely. I and mean, there's so much evidence that movements are not built by great leaders and figureheads. They're built by masses of ordinary people who all become empowered to make change, first in their own lives, then in their surrounding communities, and then in the world. So what we need to do is build that sort of strong grassroots movement where everyone who walks in the door feels like their voice matters and their power is growing as an activist and part of a movement. Yes. If you're in the uh, Bay Area, I've been to the Animal Rights Center, and uh, wow, what a fun place that is. I, they, you have open mic nights and all sorts of different events. We've got parties, we've got potlucks, we've got lectures, we've got music events, we've got art showings. You name it, it's probably happening in the Animal Rights Center. And frankly, if, there has, if there's something that hasn't happened in the Animal Rights Center that could be effective for animals, we want to make it happen. So, And it's not just a space for DXC. We've had you know, vegan outreach, UPC, Mercy for Animals. I mean, all sorts of groups have come in and showed their documentaries and spoken about their work because we need to have a powerful and unified movement. So whether you're a welfarist or an abolitionist, whether you believe in direct action or education, there's a place for you at the Berkeley Animal Rights Center. Excellent. And for anyone watching who wants to get involved with DXC, uh, what can they do? Sign up to our mailing list. Just go to directactionover.com. There's a button on the top right side that says sign up. You're going to get calls to action, stories about open rescues that happen, mobilizations, announcements about big conferences and forums that are coming up, like the DXC Forum and at UC Berkeley at the end of May, which is literally the best week of the year for everybody in DXC. So sign up and, and get plugged into a local chapter. There are chapters in 130 plus cities around the world. If there's one even remotely near you, um, go out and meet the folks face to face because face to face is, is where change really happens. Thank you, Wayne, for everything you do to help the animals. Sure, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone.